In the bottom left of this fresh best of five, we do have Dark. In the top right, it is Max Pax. Sorry, my cat's staring at me. It's hard to concentrate. So Max Pax's ZVP, or PVZ, I guess from his angle, uh, has never really been all that bad. I, not, I think it's maybe not as talked uh, about as much because PVT is in such a rough state. Any good Protoss player in that matchup is going to be talked about way more. But Max Pax has always had good PVZ. I still don't think it's really the best. I feel like it's mostly... I don't know how to... like. It's, it's mostly what Protoss have to do, if that makes sense. You know, we certainly talk about a lot of his uniqueness in PvP and PvT, but not really PvZ. And I don't think it's because we're missing something big. I know pro gamers would probably point out little tiny details about what he does, and that's fair enough. But overall, it just seems like some solid matchup. Dark would probably be, uh, in the matchup that we're watching, would probably be the more unique one. If Dark was Terran, then they'd be a completely different story. But in the ZVP, Dark is probably the one that's going to be doing a lot weirder and cheesier and all-in he builds. Or he might just go for mid-game all-ins every single time and clobber Max Pax over the head because that seems to be one of Max Pax's weaknesses in the matchup. I don't cast his PVZs nearly as much as the PVTs or his PVPs, but of the one recently that I cast, um, he didn't really seem to have a totally great handle on the mid and late game defense with Blinkstalk or Colossus in particular. So... That could be a weakness, but only if he goes into it, because you still can go into Charge Out Archon, you can still go for your all-ins, your Adept Attacks. Uh, you got super passive games occasionally, where you go right into Stargates, basically. Yeah, not that I think Dark will be playing that super passive game, but if he does, Dark is also very, very good at late game. So, I think we would usually look at these two players, playing on North America, by the way. This is one of the EPT North America Open Cups. And we'd say that Dark should be favored. He is the more experienced, decorated player. He's Korean. Max Pax is not. I mean, what more do you need? In this day and age, a little bit more than that. Seven years ago, you could literally just be like, this guy's Korean. <laughs> it's still the running joke, of course, in the uh, outside of StarCraft II video game circle. Gotta tell you, I really hate going into Reddit threads that eventually discuss StarCraft, and they're all so inaccurate about it. Oh, it just bothers me so much. Anywho, Overlord was scouting the warp gate timing, but we know that Max Pax likes to just kind of randomize his warp gate timings. He very rarely seems to do the standard warp gate first for Twilight Council, warp gate second for Stargate. It is a Twilight Council. I don't know if Dark is keen on this, because I wasn't paying attention to the warp gate timing myself. But I do believe these guys actually play a decent amount together because they do play in the North American Open Cup uh, frequently. Not all the time, but frequently. And I do know that many people, including the Koreans, know of Max Pax. I respect him quite a bit. Three drones go down to two adepts that apparently are going to live. Hello? Wow, that's not a great start for Dark. That's not supposed to happen at all. Resident Glaives is on the way, and does Dark actually know that? Is still the biggest question, I suppose. But yeah, not a great start. Losing three drones for nothing. I'm getting more and more concerned that Dark does not believe this is Adepts. He is not mining gas. He is... Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe that's still perfectly timed. Alright, Urgeborn is coming down. Okay. This might be perfectly timed. I'm bad at Zerg, he's good at Zerg. I do, I felt like it usually, well, because he lost three drones. That Roach Warren has been coming down like 38 drones for a lot of those Zergs. Um, so, is it perfectly timed or a little late? And is he a little under drone? Okay, now he's back at the good drone count. But he had to fit those in. The Roach Warren's still not done. The Adept Attack is starting, but the Warpism isn't here, so it's not the real Adept Attack. And actually, already moving on to that Robotics Bay, Max Pax is thinking about the Colossus follow-up. This is the style he played at least one game versus Lambo recently. This was about two weeks ago, I think. It's not the most recent Open Cup, but the previous one. <clears throat> Uh, 
And he didn't really dedicate all that much to the Adepts. Dark does seem to have timed this out rather well. Now, the important issue is whether or not Dark can take care of this while also getting that stable Zerg economy. We know that's the, the real trick about defending Adepts. It's going to be Disruptors, actually, into Disruptor Drop. That's what he did. That's right. He did go into Disruptor Drops <clears throat> and eventually into Colossus. So the Adepts, not going to really shade here. I mean, that's just not going to be too good. But uh, looking for opportunities later on. Ling run by is going to force some Adept warp ins back at home, taken away from the offense. That's good. It is only three gateways, so it really has not been dedicated to at all. Adepts now taking the opportunity to kill a couple of Roshis. I mean, hey, the opportunity's there, I suppose. The shade might have to go through. Uh, no, not going to go. Just because the army was chasing it down. Probably wouldn't be army back at the natural, but besides not to go for it, wasn't really in that uh, close range of a mineral line, so. And so far, the adept attack not working out very much at all. Dark might have been a little later to rounding out the drone count thanks to the early game adept harassment, but he did time that out perfectly. And since it wasn't even going to be dedicated to, he didn't really need to build all that much army. He has been building drones. He's going to intercept an observer who was just simply not expecting that warp prism or the uh, anti-warp prism spore, I think. Maybe it was an anti-observer spore. If so, that was perfectly placed. And now Max Pax has the disruptor drop. Knows where the spore crawler is. Going to avoid it, of course. Go for maybe the queen here. Nope, going to go for the drones. Not that many on this particular minefield. Queen, I guess, would have been okay, too. But four drones, so yeah, that's better. And the Adept's still pressuring, but Dark is not even engaging the main attack. He's going to go for the run by, something that Max Pax is not necessarily prepared for. A shield battery is in place, and probes are pre-pulled quite nicely. The Lings are still, nonetheless, targeting the shield battery. Take it down. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to get very much more. Simply put, the Stalkers are in a good position. There we go, he controls them. The Adepts did run on home, and are now cleaning things up, but this was, uh, not just some probe damage. It actually wasn't that much. That's not too bad. It was more so that it dragged all of Max Pax's army back home. Dark was looking to perhaps capitalize on it, deciding now, ah, maybe not. Maybe not actually an opportunity. Now the Disruptor's gonna try and grab two Ravagers, which is pretty good. Actually, Ravagers quite expensive. And Max Pax, because he only lost two probes, which really they ended up being a really good last-second defense, is fine. He is fine. It's Dark who now needs to go into more drones, since he did have a moment where he pondered about, you know, actually engaging. He wasn't droning as hard as he could have been. Disruptor is still getting some shots off, but not getting too much damage. If they're just consistent, they're pretty good. But they would want more, because Dark actually is going to dedicate to an attack. He's building up a lot of lings. Ravager count has grown a lot in the last 30 seconds. But he also would be defending. Max Pax actually moving out. Um, it's not a true attack for Max Pax. His fourth base is on the way. A Dark doesn't want this to let... A, what doesn't want to let a snowball, right? So he's going to try and build up this army. And he's also going to want to have to slip in a fourth base at some point, which might prove difficult if Max Pax actually does control the map and start warping in charge lots as well. Charge is a fair distance away, so that's not an immediate concern, but... Dark on three bases to Max Pax potential fourth really needs to use the army that he has built up to not just defend against the attack But yes, absolutely also engage into Max Pax and that's again something that Max Pax wasn't necessarily expecting the pylon goes down But backup pylon was around Dark didn't see that one So the shield body overcharge has been very effective to help the defense and now Max Pax catches only a portion of Dark's army With all of his army and that's a slam dunk victory for the Protoss Dark's other army that was chasing down the Stalkers was simply not as fast. No Roach Speed was ever produced despite Dark getting to that lair, so he is missing a pretty crucial upgrade, not just offensively, but even defensively, right? Not being able to move around the map as fast with his reinforcing Roaches is a big deal. It doesn't so much matter for the Ravagers, which are going to get crowded anyways, but reinforcing Roaches were inevitable, and they're just they're going to be slow as hell. And that is actually it. GG. Max Pax controlling the game, controlling the ebb and flow of ZVP, so that Dark was never really quite as situated as he would like to be. Masterful. Masterful. Kind of. It was a good performance from Max Pax. But I think Dark has got a lot more teeth than he uh, bared right there. And we'll probably see it for the remainder of this best of five. <clears throat> in the top right, we have Dark. In the bottom left of Royal Blood, it is Max Pax. Max Pax, as I said, really just controlled the ebb and flow. 
The Zerg players are going to be the most vulnerable to not truly understanding what's happening at any given moment. If they have momentary doubts, that hurts them probably the most of any race. However, on the flip side, if they're confident, then they can really min-max, I think, the best out of the races. Which, in my opinion, would explain somewhat the fact that we have some of the world's best players being Zerg, but then are missing out on a lot of the middle Zerg. The uh, not-quite-Rainers and Serral Zergs. They get Lambo and a laser, and then some of the uh, Korean Zergs, of course, get a nod. But, uh, Rainer, Serral, Dark. Rogues and military. I would not include Ragnarok in the top, top, top tier. Nor DRG, uh, nor Scarlet, or um, a laser in Lambo. And then even if we do consider the middling Zerg, again, the number is just not exactly there. Wardy's talked a lot about how hard it is to find, you know, competitive Zerg. There's a lot more competitive Protoss who are around that level, you know, 10 through 30, 50, for whatever it is, players, than there are Zerg. And the Protoss don't reach the top. That's the that's the life of StarCraft 2 right now. And Terran players are just all over the place, aren't they? They're in the low tier, they're in the mid tier, they're in the high tier, they're contaminating all of GSL. They're having a good time. Terran's doing fine. Anywho. Um, so yeah. Just uh perhaps a little bit tough to be able to min-max as, as well as those top, top, top tier Zergs. When it comes to building up your economy, which is obviously the foundation of a lot of Zerg play, but then also choosing uh, exactly the times at which to be aggressive. Now, Dark might not have been able to really, let's again say, min-max in that last game as well as he would hope. Usually, Dark still hits like a brick. So even if he's been pushed a little bit, you know, you're pushing him and he's kind of wobbling around a little bit, eventually he finds the strength and the balance to punch you in the face. And you're like, ah, oh, that kind of hurt, shit. But in that last game, nope, he was just constantly kept off balance. Constantly. So, I think one of the goals, of course, be to not have that happen. And it's already going to be a very different game anyways, pacing-wise, because Max Pax is going to go into a Stargate. So as much as the Adepts, I think, did successfully keep Dark kind of like, do I do this, do I do that, do I this, do that? Uh, that's not a guarantee. Obviously, you've seen a lot of Adept openers completely fall on their faces and then open up a whole world of possibility for the Zerg in which they could get to 70, 80 drones, max out, and kill the guy. So it's not like you can do that every single game. Stargate opener has less opportunity, perhaps, to really offset the Zerg player. You kind of know how the game's going to go once you see that first Oracle. But it does have the potential of harassing. Max Max has some good micro. And it does set up the Protoss player in a good pre-base economy most of the time. This time, the Adepts really aren't as impressive. In fact, with some Lings getting into the natural, the amount of damage has been equalized. And this time around, Max Max is gonna lose both Adepts. So they got one more drone. He loses both Adepts. They are no longer capable of pairing up with more Adepts in the future with the Oracles, which has been a lot of what Protoss have been doing. They've gotten like five Adepts, moved out, used the Oracles to harass, and then cover the Adepts as they continue to pressure around the creep spread. So you'd have like five Adepts here and the Oracles would help them out. So two Adepts less to do that, if that was Max Pax's plan. Also, two less Adepts to come back home and help defend the third base, especially against a Zerg player who, uh, Almost always shows aggressive tendencies, but literally in the last game, kept on run buying the poor guy. And those run buys, by the way, I think were a really good idea. I mean, not to paint that last game as if Dark was just dead the entire time, playing worse the entire time. Overall, that's what happened. But the run buys, I thought, were actually great ideas. And if Max Pax wasn't as good as he was reacting, those last second defenses, those really could have tripped him up for sure. At this time, no Ling run buys, just drones. Third Nexus will come down eventually. There we go. And the Oracles have not really found any amount of damage as of yet. Maybe one more drone by the looks of it. Roachborn is on the way. Dark, uh, I mean, he's, he's more of a Roach player than most of the Zergs. That's just, that's just the fact, I believe. ZVT, ZVP, ZVZs, you know, whatever. Um, but so many Zergs are going for that plus one melee that it does still surprise me seeing someone just slap down the Roach Warren. This could have been for an all-in if there wasn't a lair. Um, it might still be for an all-in, excuse me, but just a later one. 
Uh, not going to be a hatchery based one. But it is also going to just, you know, be primarily roaches being built. Perhaps later on we might get some Ling Bane Ling added on. Oracles doing some damage, also scouting around for... Well, exactly that. What type of composition is Dark going into? Is he all inning me? So far, seeing a lot of drones and all the bases lessens the likelihood of an all-in. Although, if I think Max Pax gets back in as he kills nine drones here with the double-pronged attack. Whoa, 10, 11, no spore crawl in the natural, Dark's Queens all over the place. Wow. Okay. Um, well, now it's a bit confusing, honestly, because... The drones have been pulled every which way so much, and they just died. You can't really tell that Dark has stopped droning. <laughs> like, as soon as I mentioned that the drone count was okay, that's when Dark stopped droning. And that's when Max Pax started killing drones. But it looks like, thankfully, Max Pax has picked up on a relatively low number of drones, in the natural specifically, and is trying to build up sack defense in the nick of time. It's not a hatchery based all in, but it might as well be, honestly. I don't know if this was always Dark's plan. Or if he figured he definitely needs to do this after all that drone damage, but... We don't really need Roach Speed when it's all Ravagers here. Overlord, Creep, Spread, the only thing the Lair is providing. But it might be enough. It might just be enough, especially as the Lings get a wraparound on those Stalkers. That's the most punishing part so far. I mean, the Queen Queens aren't even on Creep anymore. There they go back to it, now they can transfuse up. But it's really those Ling surrounds on the Stalkers that are so brutal. Ravagers break down the sack defense, guarding the natural, and now the 7 x is under attack. Max Pax in a lot of trouble despite scouting this a little earlier on. Had he only had to defend the third base, I think he's totally fine. Had he saved some of those stalkers from being totally surrounded, I also think he might be fine, but this might be digging a little too much into his natural. This all-in is all over the place, and that's bad news for the Protoss, who really wants to consolidate their army. The Oracles also are running out of juice. The soccer number is not really increasing all that much thanks to the 7 X score being torn down. And plus one attack might not even matter in this game. Max Pax in a whole bunch of trouble. Natural entirely breached and he's just going to tap out. GG. Dark going for technically a lair all in, but really early on. Literally only making it for Overlord creep spread. GG's. So now it's tied up one to one. Bottom right, dark. Top left, it is Max Pax. Dark taking a beating on the drone count meant that his follow up to the all in, a macro follow up, pretty much non existent. It was an all in, anyways. But then also, literally, the amount of units he was reinforcing with was also cut down. I actually would have usually impacted the all in. But because Max Pax was caught just going a little too far forward without that blink. He was caught with a little too few static defense structures in the natural, I think, as well. One more shield battery farther back would have helped them hold on to that wall. Dark still made it work. Dark does tend to do that, so... That was actually a pretty good representation of what I was trying to describe, which is that Dark was being shoved every which way. He was being pushed around. He was kind of being bullied with all the Adept and Oracle harassment. If he was playing a macro game, he was screwed. But... He studied himself. Went for the all-in and punched the guy in the face. And now, didn't even see that drone move out. Thought it was an overlord, I guess. <laughs> drone is building a proxy hatch in Max Pax's face. Dark has done this before. And I must say, the last time I saw it, it was on this map in these positions and it sucked. <laughs> so let's see if it sucks again. Uh, uh, Max Pax have to scout it, first of all. So Max Pax has seen no base taken. Spawning pool and gas taken after a hatchery, clearly. What he hasn't scouted is that the third base also was not taken. So he he assumes he pilot, he's blocking the natural and the third base is on the way. He is wrong about that. So the reason that Dark's proxy hatch that I most recently saw sucked was because it was immediately scouted. The Protoss got a hunch, sent another probe out to scout around the base and immediately saw the hatchery. Will one gate expand underway this is exactly when a proxy hatch should work. Max Pax is completely oblivious. Completely. This is planned on the North American server, so both of them have sucky ping. Is it so possible to hold the proxy hatch even with this setup? Theoretically, yes, but literally only now scouting it thanks to the creep spread, it's a really bad start. Max Pax, uh, 
probably also would have wanted a, a soccer actually not an adept i think the idea with the adept is you already started it you're going to finish it you go across the map you kill a couple of drones that requires a lot of micro when you are going to be panic defending back at home even these two lings already getting in means the adept's not going to go across the map so okay never mind and the one adept might help out against lings but you would really rather have a wall however if the wall is built the spine crawlers tear it down so soccer adepts both are in trouble <laughs> max pax is in trouble it's just such a such a late response and this is exactly what dark would have wanted was for the protoss player to presume that the block was successful like oh no you blocked my base ah. <laughs> and uh, that finally works this is what it looks like when it actually works and it's too far gone already. I think if you did defend it off of such a late scout, I think it would have had to have been... <sighs> Gosh, I don't even know. Stopping the two lings from getting in so the adept could block the hole, and then the pylon gets built in the hole, and the shield batteries are built a bit faster maybe too, I don't know. I still think a stalker is usually what you would see gotten, but I just don't know if that really matters. Immortal popped out, which is great against the spine crawlers, not so good against the lings. If you do start to build up shield batteries and you get an immortal alongside, that is when the defense of the Protoss looks more and more likely. The fact that the immortal already took such a beating to the lings is a bit concerning. Only one shield battery is prepared as well. It could be targeting the pylon at this point, I think. Either way, doesn't actually matter. Does not matter. More lings come in, and that immortal still does not have its shield. He has one second away. It's going to get tapped when it's, like, the least important. I don't know. Max Pax actually might still have a chance. If the Lings got into the main base and went after the probes, or it successfully killed the Immortal, it's definitely game over. But two Immortals with a X amount of shield batteries... Nah. No, Max Pax is still dead. He's gonna lose the Nexus. It'll be one base to one base, though, so keep that in mind. Losing the Nexus is not the end of the game for Max Pax. His loss, uh, if he loses the Immortals, will be the end of the game, but here comes the Warp Prism, the best unit in the entire freaking game. I'll tell you what, Immortals now gonna be living up to their name. Lings do enter into the main and go after the Pylon and stop that third Immortal from producing. Could also go after the probes, and that's where things get really complicated. The war prison can only be in one place at one time. This immortal is not going to have an overcharge to help defend it. It's weak from earlier on. The Lings surround with the queen damage. It's going to be enough, and yeah, Max Pax is still dead. If he had a little bit more time, if that immortal was not surrounded, like that's all types of tiny details that might have eventually led to a stabilization. But Dark with, um, I mean, almost a hard counter build. Assuming they do not see that you did not get a natural. You know, kind of was supposed to win that game. <laughs> GG's. 2-1 now for Dark. Marine's the best unit? Mm, I don't know. It can shoot up, it can shoot down, but can it pick up stuff? In the bottom right, now up two to one, it is dark. In the top left, we have Max Pax. Well, I don't really think the proxy hatch is really all that great of a build. Um, <laughs> you know, I think the prime scenario for it to work is unlikely to begin with, which is exactly the scenario we just saw. But even on top of that, you could see how Max Pax would have still maybe been able to hold. And one base to one base, uh, when you have two Immortals and a Warp Prism, we kind of know what that looks like, don't we? Because we see that after a cannon rush. And generally, the Protoss wins if they don't have, you know, Ravagers plenty. So, again, had the wall held up a little bit longer, had the Immortal not gotten surrounded so that it was already almost in the red by the time it was engaging, those are all those tiny but yet big details that could change a game like that. But it, uh, yeah, it was kind of... If it, if it didn't win in that ideal scenario, it's just not a very good build.
And I would say it mostly isn't. The thing about Dark is that he basically does generally agreed upon not very good builds, <laughs> and he makes them work. The Proxy Hatch is a good example of that, but even his Nidus Worm builds, most other Zerg players don't really bother with Nidus Worms at all. Uh, well, until the late game, you know, but uh, early all ins with it, a little too identifiable, but Dark does, and then Dark wins with it. Very few other Zergs do it. And they certainly don't do it as commonly as him. I mean, Serral might throw one in just to be like, lol, so random, because no one expects it. But Dark will reliably, in a best of five, display all aggressive nature. Every game, the Protoss would be like, he's gonna all in me, he's gonna all in me, he's gonna all in me. And then somehow, Dark still makes some of them work. So that's uh, that's still Dark's most uh, defining feature, not defining feature. It's the one that sets him apart the most, in my opinion is that he does these aggressive all-in builds that a lot of Zerg players agree doesn't really are that great. You know, Zergs aren't really considered a very good all-in race or a... I keep saying all-in, but it's basically cheese, right? Because mid-game all-ins for Zerg are still fine, but the like, early game ones, not so much. And Dark just doesn't care about what people say. If he saw someone jump off a bridge, he would not jump off that bridge. He is his own man. And he's also really good macro, micro, late game, early game, blah, 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 blah. So he's pretty freaking good. Still not quite good enough to actually reach for the stars. Getting knocked out of GSL. Spoiler alert! Uh, <clears throat> most recently. And in a really weird fashion, too. I really thought he was a shoe in for it. And then he just kind of collapsed at the last second. Fumbled at the finish line. It was weird. It was weird. So... What is happening in game number three? Stargate for Max Packs. No surprises. I just went over how Dark is likely to go for more cheeses, more aggression, and I think that is still true. Especially now that he's got a game in his pocket. Even if he doesn't have a game in his pocket, even if this was 2-0, Dark would do some Nidus Worm or some shit. <laughs> you could not throw dark off a bridge. You try to throw dark off a bridge when he doesn't want to be thrown off a bridge, he's going to whoop your ass. 100%. Power of the mustache cannot be stopped. <clears throat> we do have a potential hatchery based all in coming in here. Roachhorn's on the way. Second gas. Max Pax does have an oracle. Where the heck are you, buddy? Oh, he's doing that thing. So I'm guessing what he did was he went warp gate first to make it an illusion. I think it's Twilight Council, and then he actually goes into Oracles so that the Zerg player doesn't have any spores and doesn't have queens in position. Then, boom, suddenly two Oracles. And that could do a lot of damage, but it might not be the best for defending. Or, wait, no, hold on. No, wait, hold on. No, this is actually working. No, I'm wrong. Dark is defending a potential Twilight Council opener. That's what he's doing. Oh, no. All right, so Max Pax's uh, illusion is completely working out here right now, actually. If Dark was all inning, I would do wonder how effective this is, but Dark is defending. Now Dark might all in, realizing that he has messed up. He does not have Spork Brawlers. He does not have defense for his drones. Might as well send the army that you built against the would-be Twilight Council across the map, because they ain't doing much else. Can Max Pax defend? He's still got three oracles, after all. Not with a whole lot of energy, but he's got three oracles. Shield battery's on the way. As many warpings as you can. Yeah, Dark definitely got bamboozled. I was talking up his aggression so much that even though he was doing a, a very much Twilight Cancel defense opener, I just assumed it was aggression. <laughs> no, he was completely caught off guard. And now you can see that this would be aggression. Hits like a wet noodle. Spaghetti or poo noodle, up to you guys. Just not very good. Max Pax hardly had to defend at all. Oracles came home, Adept sacrificed themselves, barely even warped in anything more. Voidray's on the way as he respects the idea of a potential follow-up, and I think that is smart of Max Pax, because Dark is still in a very, very difficult position. He cut his own drones to theoretically defend. Realizes he's not defending anything, throws the army across the map, loses drones while doing so. I mean, what are his options, really? Is he going to try and macro out of this? Probably not. Oh, a couple of units getting caught off guards on a deal for Max Packs, but I, you know, Void Ray kind of rules all. 
Because Dark's not set up to pull the queens. There's no lair for Overlord creep spread. The creep spread with creep tumors is not that impressive. And uh, no Nidus Worm, of course. Um, you know, what, what deals with the Stargate units? Adept properly protected by the Oracle. It's not going to be big bullies. Dark realizes his all-in wasn't going to work, but look at his supply. Look at his drone count. It's abysmal. Man, this is the... Uh, Max Pax is trickery with that warp gate timing. Also a little bit with the opening units as well, I would suspect. Although... I mean, Adept Stalker is really not all that impossible to get for a Stargate, right? Anyways, like, it just... The trickery worked out. The weird thing is, is that I also didn't think that Dark had scouted the warp gate. If we go back to when I was still thinking that Dark was going to be aggressive, I remember also thinking, oh, there's no Overlord to scout the warp gate anyways, so... <sighs> Three Overlords have died. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I wanted to die. But yeah, um, TLDR, I mean, Dark's pretty screwed. I don't know how you uh, get out of this one. Dark's pretty good at making comebacks happen, but I, I do mostly think about ZVT for that statement. I don't know how many ZVPs I've seen him recover. I guess it will be difficult for Max Pax to truly find the killing blow, because he's not really setting up for one, right? He is nonetheless getting farther ahead. So, you know, theoretically, the more time you give to your opponent, the more time that they can make those risky maneuvers heavily drone when they should be building army. And vice versa. You know, if Dark was able to max out right now on the last little scraps of economy that he has while Max Pax takes a fourth, you know, Max Pax would still be in trouble. But, uh... You also are more... more likely to be scouting what, what they're doing and saying, I'm just getting farther ahead. So, Max Pax still getting much farther ahead. Might actually have a killing blow with just a couple of Archons. Two Void Rays burning down a hatchery that Dark really needs. And Dark, uh... He's gonna try and all-in again, maybe. What other choice do you have? Defend all those Zealot run-bys and then go across the map would be the only chance you have, I think. If you even could, Void Rays still being... Uh, in the air. The roaches cannot attack. Nothing's gonna change that. Yeah, GG. GG. Max Pax, the Bamboozler! Bamboozle's yet another one. The Great Bamboozle. Tied up 2-2. Two to two. In the top left, we have Dark. In the bottom right, it is Max Pax. Whenever you see a best of five, it is 90% of the time going to be the finals. Unless it's a really big tournament. Like a DreamHack main tournament or GSL. Then the semifinals are best of five. But in all the open cups, best of five is for the finals only. So this is the finals of EPT North America 174. I always forget which one we're currently on, so don't completely believe me. Do your own research. Hatchery is actually going down. No proxy hatch shenanigans. Dark can only really use that once per best of, I would say. Yeah, Max Pax immediately goes to, to look at it. You know, it is kind of a conundrum a little bit for the Protoss player. In that they see the no natural... The immediate threat is usually a pool first. So they go scout the main. And then the possible threat that no one ever really does is the lack of a third base. So they kind of, they have to scout everything. But it is totally possible to do that, just to be clear. Like, <laughs> it actually takes a long time to build. So in that proxy hatch game, Max Pax just never bothered scouting the third base. He just really did assume, and that was his mistake. So now everything looks normal. Max Pax knows it's normal as well. For now. Max Pax used his also probably once in a best of five trick, which was that hiding the Oracle. You start up that warp gate immediately. 
You take away any scoutinglings is the backup plan of the Zerg player to scout if it's Oracle or not. So this, you know, the ling that's here dies. And then you keep the Oracles at home anyways until there's two of them. And if you kill this Lang that can't even see that two of them's on the way, they're really defending at the last second. So they've both really done some very tricky things to each other. So far, Warp Gate first. It is actually going to be a Twilight Council, but you can't, you just can't trust it. You need that backup. You need the Ling to scout something like the absence of an Oracle, but now that you know that he could just be holding on to two Oracles and suddenly arriving with them, you always got to be on guard. The warp Gate timing is not the end of the scouting phase for Zerg players. So <laughs> Dark might want to try and play both options. He might get one Spore Crawler and then defend his other drone line with two Queens, which is generally what you would want to do against Oracles anyways. But... Once you realize it's not oracles, you want to be on that roach horn. You want to be producing army. You want to be defending against the Twilight Council, which is going to be scouted anyways. Hello. Ling's got into the uh, the main base. Well, I mean, it's all no Stargate, so it's fine. They, they know it's Twilight Council at this point in time. Just going to confirm it. There we go. <laughs> and that's uh, that does kind of suck. Dark would probably seriously be considering the hidden oracles up to this point if it wasn't for the Lings. Well, speaking of units inside in each other's main, Adepts do shed into the main base, but see the Lings pop out of the eggs and go, no, thank you. Recall's gonna have to be used to save them, and I think that was a good recall. Adepts, Resident Glaives on the way, Robo as well. Max Pack's a little late to his pylon, isn't he? A little supply block thanks to those couple of Lings but will stop any further damage from being taken. It's kind of, kind of a serious, well, I guess maybe not that serious. He is saturated on his mineral lines and he doesn't have to warp in immediately, so I guess it was all right. He will have to saturate a little bit more to get that third up. This 18 out of 18 is so bothersome. Adept's now moving across the field. Ah, uh, dark sling counts. Even if they got a perfect surround, I'm not sure they'd actually be able to take care of that. He's gonna need that Roach Warren, which he was late to getting, wasn't he? Or wait, maybe, is it perfectly aligned again? No, I actually think it might be perfectly aligned again. It can't help with these Adepts, it doesn't have to. It's more about the Warp Prism attack, which only is now coming in. So yet again, Dark maybe worry for a second, but nope, perfectly timed. He should be able to defend, no problem. But this is similar to the first game now. I mean, there's a little bit more with the Lings getting into the main base and whatnot, but this is more like that first game where Dark just couldn't really gel <laughs> with the pace that Max Pax had set and fell behind in a rather sad, unfortunate, kind of boring way. It just suddenly just taps out, right? This is a Frost Giant shirt. I don't think it's on sale anymore. It's very, very comfy, and I'm all lorded over you. Seriously, one of my favorite shirts. <laughs> Can't get it. Warp Prism's gonna try and just do some mild harassment off to the side while Max Pax builds up a Disruptor follow-up. This is what he does. Why would I lord it over you? Because I'm bougie. The bourgeoisie? That's me. <laughs> Adept's finding pockets and corners to hide so the Lings can't get a full surrounds. And Max Pax, again, isn't really doing a whole lot of damage. He didn't do a whole lot of damage in the first game either with Adepts. It was actually his first two Adepts that did the most damage. Mm, trying to kill a creep tumor doesn't work out. Uh, but if Max Pax can secure his third base, then he's good to go. Dark is building a lot of army, clearly intending to go across the map and kill the Protoss player. The Observer was able to scout that, I believe. Saw so much army producing from the eggs, as well as, of course, the building Ravagers. Max Pax now trying to defend, but a little bit late to starting up more of those static defenses, which I think he absolutely needs. He's going to be in a lot of trouble very, very soon. Tried to hide two Adepts off to the side to get a backstab, but they actually get caught out, so not the best situation possible. Dark is setting up for an all-in. Live or die by the all-in. Is he going to win with this? He catches more Adepts off to the side. Max Pack's really messing up. He wants all these units kind of together with a last-second split against the Corrosive Biles, if need be, but the Corrosive Biles hit the overcharged shield battery. Now that is gone. This shield battery off to the left side, not going to overcharge and probably not going to live for a very long time. Disruptors finally make an appearance. Go after two, three Ravagers, actually. 
And with the Adepts still having Resident Glaives and finding themselves tucked into a Mineral Line, ultimately the Lings get destroyed. Dark is not going to win with this all-in. Hardly did any damage to Max Pax, to be frank. Three probes went down despite all of that chaos. Despite Max Pax seemingly kind of all over the place, that ended up working out really well for him. Disruptors do not get any shots, but I'm not sure they have to. If Max Pax has the warp gates and the supply, which he absolutely does, he can just warp in basic units, croning out the Immortal as well. And Dark is very much in trouble. 37 drones to 55 probes. Like I said, they were died by the all-in. This is literally all Dark has got. And Max Pax has managed to hold the consistent Adept warp-ins, the number of Adepts he was able to build was just too much for the Lings, the very basic Lings. You can see the Lings still not really getting anything, and they're not getting the surround at this point either, so even less likely to do damage. Some probes will die, but we have, uh, the drones are dying somewhere? Where the hell did that happen? I guess two Adepts did eventually make their way across the map. Lings kill an Immortal, which is usually a great grab, but Dark is already so freaking screwed, it doesn't really matter, and there you have it. Max Pax wins his best of five for the EPT Open Cup North America. Uh, three to two against Dark. GG's. Max Pax still looking strong in all the matchups. Hope you guys like the cast. Please like, subscribe, follow all the good stuff. And I'll see you for more StarCraft 2 cast in the future.